One. Hi, this is Patrick with G.I. Joe Adventures, and I'm with Steven Stanton. So, um, what did you do on Renegades? G.I. Joe Renegades. G.I. Joe Renegades, the, uh, the animated series, uh, I played, uh, I was cast as two of the uh, Two of the villains I was cast as the twins, Tomax and Zaymont. Of course. Uh, yes, they're very iconic uh, villains from the G.I. Joe saga. Oh, so um, what, was your what was your favorite part with um, doing the Renegades? Uh, part of the fun of doing Tomax and Zaymont is the fact that uh, in many of the scenes, uh, I'm talking to myself since I did the voices for both of the twins. So I would have several pages of dialogue and I would switch back and going from the one with the lower voice and then the one with the higher voice and they would talk back and forth to each other. So that was, that was part of the fun of doing those characters, plus the fact that everybody knows who these guys are. It's always fun when you get to play an iconic villain that, you know, people love to hate, like Tarkin in the Clone Wars. Yeah, of course. So wait, how, uh, how many were actually played during being a voice actor? Well, let's see. That's a good question. A lot of times in, in a lot of cartoon shows, part of the reason they hire uh, you know, particular people is because you can do a lot of voices. So sometimes I've done up to three voices in a show, like in Clone Wars, sometimes I'll do like three voices. And usually in, when I was doing the Mad television show, the TV animated show based on Mad Magazine, I would always do three voices. But uh, in some of my own projects, like Sarge, uh, I usually do all the voices. Sometimes I've done as many as, you know, like six or eight different voices for, for one episode. Oh, okay. So, um, what, you mentioned you did Clone Wars. Yes. So, who did you play? On the Clone Wars, I played uh, Admiral Wilhuff Tarkin, the future commander of the Death Star, the one that, you know, interrogates Princess Leia, uh, blows up Alderaan and all that stuff. I also played uh, the bounty hunter Moralo Evol, or a lot of YouTubers know him as Uncle Morallo from Morallo's Bedtime Stories. Mm -hmm. And uh, Colonel Meeber Gascon. Uh, uh, Very uh, small guy. Yes, the little frog guy that was on the got lost on the in the void uh, with R2 and all his other droids. And I also played um, uh, Masameda, you know, the uh, the right-hand man of the, of the Emperor. He's not yet mm -hmm. almost yeah, Emperor, Senator Palpatine. Yeah, yes. And uh, there's a lot of other sort of smaller characters I played in the show, but those are some of the major ones. And I can't talk about the ones I played in season six. So, so tell us um, a, more about your the Sarge character. Uh, the character of the Sarge and his buddy Hamish, uh, which are now sort of a stop motion series that uh, that I have, are, are they they grew out of uh, the Super Eight film stop motion films I did as a kid when I was like thirteen years old in junior high school. I used to have a lot of GI Joes and Captain Action and Noble Knight, you know, and Johnny West and all that stuff. Uh, and these are all figures that my brother and I had. And I uh, got a Super 8 camera and I started making stop motion films because I was a big fan of like Ray Harryhausen and guys that were doing things like, like Seven Voyages and Sinbad. So those old Super 8 films, the characters could never talk. So finally, and now we're in the age of modern yeah, technology and uh, stop motion is now easy to do again with digital technology. Um, uh, I decided to kind of like reboot that whole thing with those characters, finally give them the voices that I think they so richly deserved. Oh wow! So, well, you're so it was kind of like me and me and my uh, brother. We were we still have a bunch of like, Star Wars figures and yeah, Joe's in, in our rooms too. Exactly. Yeah, and the uh, the whole idea between you know Joe is uh, he's just he's just the GI Joe that sits on your shelf, but when you're away, he does whatever he wants to do. Now he thinks he knows everything, and mm -hmm. he's not. He has the perspective of a toy, so some of his facts aren't always right. Hamish is there to try to uh, his buddy from who's an action man toy, you know that kind. He's the, he's the British equivalent of what the Sarge is. He um, he kind of keeps uh, the Sarge in line. Oh. And then they have all the other toys that they meet, you know, that keep appearing in the house as they come in the mail or on eBay. You know, they met a cowboy, they met uh, the other character called Cappy, who they found in a flea market, and is he's not so right in the head because he was, you know, wrapped up in some smelly old socks, and so it kind of messed up, messed him up. And you know, there's a whole, there's a whole range of toys that uh, that they meet over the years here. Well, thank you for your for your time, and um, I'm glad you could could do this for us cool. and our little, little recording thing. No, absolutely. It's my pleasure. Thank you, Patrick. It was yeah. great meeting you. You too.